which you clipped is the snowiest. <gasps> Eucalyptus porciflora! This tree's fame and its deep roots into our shared culture is only matched by the river red gum. Growing at the two extremes of our continental elevations is its trademark. But its ability to inhabit the coldest, windiest and snowiest high alpine areas is how we as a nation know it best. It is easily identifiable by its basic morphological characteristics compared to most other eucalypts. And it was Eucalypt of the Year in 2019. The truly iconic snow gum, or Eucalyptus porciflora, is one of, if not the most, famous eucalypt. It is characteristically found in the high altitude and picturesque alpine areas of the continent. The kind of places where Banjo Patterson wrote of inspiring generations of city folk to try their luck in the bush. While the snow gum does much prefer cold areas above 700 metres in elevation, it isn't exclusively bound to the cold alpine environments. It grows as far north as Stanthorpe in Queensland and as far south as the blustery, bleak bitter cold Tasmanian Central Plateau. So the snow gum, the snowiest eucalypt, covers a very large area of the continent's southeast. Yep, it covers a wide area. But the really weird thing is that the snow gum is the champion of altitudinal distribution. If you are going for a swim at Wilson's Promontory or the Mornington Peninsula, there is a good chance you can give it a high five on the way to the beach. Similarly, if you're about to hit the slopes of Mount Kosciuszko, you can give it a check on the way past. Gah! Sick range, brah! The identification of the snow gum is quite easy because it has a number of key morphological characteristics that easily separate it from other eucalypts. Eucalyptus porciflora leaves are thick, glossy and waxy with, what's that? Clearly visible veins? The bark is possibly what we tree nerds love the most about this tree. It can be anything from a shimmering silver to a rusty red. With the botanical name porciflora, meaning few flowers, you might imagine it has few flowers. Well, nah, it's got heaps. But you know, how did it get the name Porciflora if it has heaps of flowers? Well, a botanist named Franz Wilhelm Sable traveled from Europe to New South Wales in 1823 and collected many plants. He named the species Porciflora because the samples he collected only had a few flowers. It was 1823. They didn't even have iPhones then, so cut the guy some slack. Jeez. When you live in very cold places, the winters can be long and feel quite dull. Well, trees, particularly trees in colder places are the same because long, cold winters are not the best for growing. However, when the snow melts and the warm weather returns, the trees come back to life and grow rapidly taking advantage of the short growing season. This slowing, then increasing rates of growth each year produces clearly visible tree rings. Dendrochronology is a study of tree rings. And you might have already heard of counting tree rings as a way to age them. But tree rings can provide much more information than a tree's age. Researchers are now using the relative distances between each ring to give information about the tree's growth and changes in the environment, such as snow quantity and temperature in the snow gums case. If there is a pattern in the modern tree rings that matches up with modern temperature and rainfall records, then there is a relationship. We can then extrapolate a back in time using the dendrochronological records to estimate how much snow fell, which then 
indicates how much rain fell elsewhere. With some trees growing for many hundreds of years, this is a very valuable method for looking at weather patterns way into the past. It is also a very visual way to see long-term changes in weather and climate. The snow gum or eucalyptus porciflora is a tree that has the biggest altitudinal distribution of all the eucalypts. It is a prominent feature in some of our most dramatic landscapes. It has a number of easily recognizable characteristics and is providing a valuable climate record detailing weather conditions hundreds of years into the past. I'm Steve from The Tree Projects and you keep on yukin. <laughs> Using the dendrochronology Dendrochronological Dendrochronological Eucalypt Australia runs the Eucalypt of the Year competition. Have you ever thought about how special your local eucalypt is? And how it fits into the complex and diverse world of the eucalypts? Now is the time to get ready for Eucalypt of the Year 2021. There's also uh, two links. Uh, you can click on them and subscribe if you like as well. But uh, I'm out. Catch up.